Good evening. Good morning. It's actually morning time where I'm at right now, and I just want to uh, just give you a little word from the Lord, because I, I believe that there's um, you know, I know people that has uh, confessed Christian, and um, they said I'm Christian. Uh, you know, uh, I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. But then I see you. Like, and I'm not judging or anything. I'm not judging without being a righteous judgment. Because actually the Bible says in uh, Matthew 7. Let's read that right quick. I'm going to go ahead and read that. And then I'm going to go back to uh, actually Matthew 7. You know, talks about that word judgment. Or, and, you know, it talks about judging everybody. You know, we all have heard that, uh, you know, that... Uh, you know, don't thou shall not judge. Only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. But actually, Tupac said that. Actually, the Bible talks about judgment quite a bit. But it don't talk about, well, yeah, it does say that the Lord is the judge. He's standing at the door. It does say that in James. It does say that. But really, your own life is going to judge you. God is just standing there, you know. Your own life is going to judge you. The way you live on this earth is what's going to judge you. How you live your life is what's going to judge you. That's what gets you either into the kingdom of God or into the kingdom of heaven. Or it gets you into, um, gets you thrown into the gates of hell or thrown into hell with the beast and the false prophet. Uh, so it's really not, well, it's God judges you, but he... He judged you based on what your life said about you on this earth. That's really the real deal. Let's talk about, let's first off, let's turn to uh, Matthew 7. And, and we're going to read that scripture. And now everyone knows the first part of it. Matthew 7, 1 says, Judge not that ye be judged. Or in other words, it says, Judge not. Unless you be judged, or lest you be judged. But uh, in this one, it says, Judge not that ye be judged. And in other words, lest you be judged, or you'll get the same kind of judgment. For, and then uh, part two go, uh, or verse two is, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure, measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Now, verse 3, well, the, the word judge pretty much is saying, uh, well, you can look it up, but the word judge, this, I'm going to give you an exact example of what judgment really is. Judgment is like, say that I said, said to you, say that I said to you, don't go to the club on Saturday and get drunk and party and sleep with such and such and try to come up, try to come to church on Sunday. You're going to hell for that. And then that same Friday or whatever or Saturday, you see me in there telling you not to do, you see me in there doing what I told you not to do. That's judging. But the Bible said, pretty much says, now, there's a scripture in, I think, John, and it's in 7, I think, John 7, maybe, that says, don't judge the appearance. Jesus said, don't judge appearance, judge with righteous judgment. So, don't judge by the way it looks on the outside. But your own life is going to judge. Your own life judges you. The Bible says, by their fruits, you recognize them. So, if you're claiming Christian based on, you know, the word Christian means be Christ-like. It really means Christ in you because that's what um, Paul was talking about. You know, it's Christ in me. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Peter, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You know, Paul and people, Christ in me is no longer I who live, but Christ who liveth in me. You know, it's all a, being Christ, being a Christian or a Christian. It says Christ in you, or Christ like. But in order, let me read. Hold on, let me read this part of um, 
the whole, and then I'm gonna go back to that part too. But judgment basically is this, and we're gonna go. Okay, so we're in Matthew seven. We're gonna go to uh, let's see, verse three, and it says, "And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider it's not the being that is in thine own eye." So. Christ was really saying, why are you looking at that person what you got your own sin to deal with? You know? Now, we're all, we all, now the Bible does say we all have, because everyone gets that wrong too. Everyone leaves the have out to justify a sinning. Sinners practice sin. But if you're a Christian, then you're supposed to be a saint. So you're not supposed to be continuing to practice sin. I know that we all make mistakes. I know that we ain't perfect because Christ is the only one that walked perfect. But that still shouldn't give us an excuse to just, oh, well, I'm going to sin anyway. But when you are filled with the Spirit of God, then it's hard to sin because you have Christ in you. You got company. You, If you, are, if you have the Holy Ghost, then it's hard to sin. You won't want to sin. That's not, you won't want to sin. That's not a desire of yours to sin if Christ lives in you. If the Holy Ghost lives in you, which is the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of obedience, which is the spirit of power, which that's what the Holy Ghost, when you, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you receive power. Acts 1 8, right? Well, that's what they're talking about. So you won't want to sin. And if you do, you'll be so convicted, you'll repent of it. I believe that, I know, that the Holy Ghost is also, well, I wouldn't say the spirit of repentance. Because really the Holy Ghost is like, after Christ ascended, he sent that, that spirit down. It is really the power of God living in, in, in within you. You know, it's the supernatural presence of God living within you. You know, and so it caused you to repent. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you got you got to yield to it. But when you yield to it, it caused you to make that turn. It caused you not to want to do that again. You know, it caused you to say, "Lord, forgive me. I said this about this person. I have to do it every day. Lord, forgive me for my attitude. Lord, forgive me for what I was thinking. Lord, forgive me for for wanting to judge this person. You know, I have to do that every day." I have to repent every day. I have to repentance is not one time thing. So you have to walk in repentance. But if you're a Christian, then then if you're claiming Christian, then you're supposed to have Christ in you. That means that I shouldn't hear you say talking about the, the same things that the world talks about. I shouldn't hear you. Saying the same things that the world says or cussing like the world does. I expect the world to do that because they're of the world. They don't know anything about. There's a there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of darkness, and then there's the kingdom of light, which is of the Father's dear Son, which is Jesus Christ. I expect the world to act like that because they're in that kingdom. They're in the kingdom of darkness and until they get transferred. Into the kingdom of light, which is in Colossians, I think 118 or so, 113, 118, somewhere up in there. You're going to continue to do that and not expect it. But if you're claiming to be a Christian and if you're claiming Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've been a Christian, now some of us have just became Christian. You know, I'm not even, I'm talking about those that's been in the church for 20, 30, 50 years. You know what I mean? They, they've been in the church for for a long time. They go to church every Sunday and go to Bible study every Wednesday and, you know, but they continue and then there's some that just say, oh, when Christ come back, I'm going with him. But you're sitting there cussing and you're sitting there, you know, mocking, you know, you're, you're sitting there mocking holy things. And then you're sitting there, you know, judging other Christians. Now, I, I myself have a lot of work to do. But I can't depend on myself to do it. I have to depend on the Holy Spirit to do it. You know, because ain't none of us perfect. And I got a lot of things that I have to work on. But it just, uh, sometimes it'll bother us if Christians claim Christ, but they're sitting there acting like the world. Like, that's cool or whatever. That's not cool. 
Because when you're a Christian, you strive to heal. You strive to yield to the Holy Spirit. You strive to yield to what what Christ wants you to do. You strive. You 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 want to yield to the plan of God for your life and the will of God for the for your life. So let's go. I'm gonna go to this, and then I, this is gonna be it for you. Uh, John three. Let's go to John three, and and um, you know. So we're going to go to John 3 right quick and John 3 they're going to go to John 3 and 3 first this is the King James Version by the way that I'm reading the, uh, the very first real translation of God to me uh, Jesus answered and said unto him first he was talking to Nicodemus so he said uh I'm going to back up to verse 2. It said the same. Well, I'm going to back up. Go ahead and back up the first one. There, there was a man of of Pharisees, which the Pharisees were like these religious leaders and priests and stuff that knew the law back and forth. Like some of us can know this Bible back and forth. But they were still doing things that were against this law. But they wanted to judge everyone else because they wasn't doing it right. You know, and they wanted to throw this law on everybody else to make them, you know, want, trying to get them to be converted and, and make them a child of hell. Trying to control people with, basically it's religion, what it was. Trying to control people with, with the law or whatever. And so, his name was Nicodemus and he was a ruler of the Jews and... The same came to Jesus by that night. He came to Jesus. He went to Jesus and said unto him, Rabbi, which means teacher, we from God, we we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Really, really, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, and he cannot see the king, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, what does that mean? Nicodemus said unto him, "How can a man be born again? Be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born?" Jesus answered, "Really, really, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit." Notice that it don't just say water. So a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm saved because I got baptized when I was such and such years old. But according to this word, this the, the truth of God, John 17, 17, that word is true. According to this, it says that you have to be born of water and of the spirit. Exactly. That's what it says in, in John 3, 5. Except the man be born again. Um, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God what's the kingdom the kingdom of God is joy peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost Romans 14 17 check that out